Joseph D'Angelo was in the Navy. He was a police officer. He was married. He was like a Hannibal Lecter, highly intelligent, highly sadistic, master manipulator. His first rape attack that we know of, he was 30 years old. This was a man who was clearly living a double life. A man in a leather hood entered the window of a house in Citrus Heights and sneaked up on a 16-year-old girl watching television alone in the den. He pointed a knife at her and issued a chilling warning. Make one move and you'll be silent forever, and I'll be gone in the dark. Crime after crime, it was that same terrifying M.O. I saw a flashlight shining down the hall, and I thought, no, that's odd. The leather gloves are really, really remembered because they made kind of a sound, you know, when they moved. He started ripping sheets or towels, I'm not sure, but it was very methodical and it was very slow. It was a time when a vast area was terrified of one evil being. This was a criminal who went by many different names. He was known as the East Area Rapist in Sacramento County, the original Night Stalker in Orange County. A 29-year-old wife was raped while her tied-up husband had to listen. A 17-year-old girl was attacked here. He would put his knees on the victim's chest, and he had a gun in one hand, a flashlight in the other. Peepings, prowlings, stalking. Over 100 burglaries. Police think he checks the home out before he strikes. He put plates on the man's back, and he told the man, if I hear these rattle, I will kill your wife. At least 13 homicides. <laughs> this is a sustained campaign of cruelty and viciousness that lasted for decades. Welcome to Crime Scene, a podcast that examines real life crimes. I'm Michelle McNamara of TrueCrimeDiary.com. Michelle McNamara was a true crime blogger. She was a writer and producer. She was a citizen detective and a true crime writer. Very much being a mom during the day, very much writing about true crime at night. She was working on all different types of unsolved cases. Then she found a case that really dug its claws into her. What turned him on was terror. The East Area Rapist Original Night Stalker is California's most prolific serial offender. He murdered more people than the Zodiac Killer, but has little name recognition. Partly that's because he moved between communities and his crimes spanned 10 years. Everything about it is a mystery, um, and it has such a boogeyman aspect to it. Michelle used to talk about this case, and the thing that boggled her mind is that people didn't know about it. This was one of the most horrific serial killers in history, and nobody talked about him. It's summer, 1976. It was the bicentennial. It's all about happy days. Happy days. Laverne and Shirley. Hostenbeck Incorporated. In those days, the middle class in America was thriving. We felt safe, but the crime rates were going up. But suburban Sacramento was considered a safe place in the mid 70s. You could ride your bike all over town. My parents would just tell us, be home before dark. People didn't lock their doors, they left their windows open, especially people close to the river would get the Delta breeze. Everything changed in the summer of 1976. An attack occurred in Rancho Cordova. A young lady woke up and there's a guy standing in the doorway. They blindfolded her, tied her up. And then sexually assaults her. This is the first known sexual assault attributed to the man we know as the East Area Rapist. Nobody knew about the first attack except the police. The first attack, the second, the third, the fourth. When this first started in Sacramento, a lot of the people didn't know what was going on. They didn't put it in, in the paper at the time. The press had not yet covered it because Sacramento County Sheriff's Department asked them not to. There was a reason for that, that if you put it in there, the suspect's going to know that you're looking for him. At the time the rape started happening in Sacramento, Sacramento Sheriff's Department didn't have a specialized sexual assault unit. Just whoever had a free caseload, you know, that could take on another case. And so I did not become involved with these cases until rape number five when it was Jane Carson. I was 30 years old. I was married with a three-year-old son. My husband was stationed at McClellan Air Force Base. 
Jane was a nurse. She was a colonel in the Air Force Reserve. It was about 6.30 in the morning. My three-year-old son hopped in bed with me for a snuggle. I heard the garage door close, and I knew my husband had just left for work. I saw a flashlight shining down the hall, and I thought, now that's odd, and I screamed out to my husband, what have you forgotten? And there was no answer. Then the rapist, all dressed in ski mask and dark clothes, shining the flashlight at her. He told us with clenched teeth, shut up or I'll kill you. He tells her to turn over and he's gonna tie her up. He gags us, both of us. He blindfolds us and he ties us up with shoelaces, very tight. His next move was to move my son. I was already scared to death. But this is where the fear really took place. All she's thinking about is the life of her little boy and saving him. After the rape was over, praise the Lord, he moved my son back next to me. I could feel his body, and then I was relieved. So we hobbled around to the front fence, screamed for a neighbor. She called the police. And then Carol Daly, the female detective, showed up. And uh, I call her my angel. One of my great heroes of this story is Carol Daly. She was an investigator for the sheriff department in Sacramento. She was asked to go out and interview the victims. Maybe something that the man said or something that he did to you or uh, something that you recall hearing. Through that process, she was able to glean a lot of information, like what he would say to his victims. And sometimes he would call out a name. In one of the cases, uh, the victim said that uh, she heard him crying and saying, Bonnie. For years, detectives didn't know what to make of this name. Who's Bonnie? Bonnie was not a victim, but a mystery woman at the center of the case. Bonnie was the girlfriend and then fiance of Joseph D'Angelo one of the first women to get a real glimpse of the psychopathy behind Joe D'Angelo was Bonnie Caldwell. She's 18, really smart, going to a community college studying nursing. And she's in the middle of the quad, and this older guy ambles up to her and begins a conversation. Bonnie talked about her relationship with Joe D'Angelo in the HBO docuseries, All Be Gone in the Dark. He was very gregarious, uh, outgoing. To all my friends, we'd been together close to a year. He gave me a high solitaire engagement ring. And he told me that we're going to be married. They were both students at the time. He was studying criminal justice. So Joe was someone who initially was impressive to Bonnie. He was exciting. He had a motorcycle. He taught her to shoot. But the longer she dated him, the more trouble began materializing. He takes her on thrill rides. And this is where the relationship starts to show its hand with Joe. Joe, without saying a word to me, just turned right, went down a very steep bank that I had no idea what he was doing. He's obviously thrilled not just by the speed, but he's thrilled by Bonnie's terror. The rules were never for him. So many of the things that we did together, he pushed me toward fear. As they're riding on a motorcycle, the German Shepherd comes out from the side of the road and nips at the tires, and Joe swings a foot out and breaks the dog's neck instantly. There's such an efficiency to his movement that stuns her. Eventually, Bonnie said, I don't want to be with you anymore. She actually broke their engagement. He showed up at her house in the middle of the night. He had a gun, and he told her that she had to marry him. Just inches from my face, there was the barrel of a, of a gun pointing at me, and it was Joe. What he said to me was, get your clothes on, get dressed, we're going to Reno, and we're going to get married tonight. Her dad was able to break it up and send Joe on his way. I think it's a foreshadowing that he was going to use violence against people in the future. Bonnie breaks her engagement with Joe D'Angelo, and within just a few years, strange crimes start happening in Rancho Cordova. He would empty female underwear drawers and perfectly line up the underwear down the hallway. It's 
all control and power. This is my house now. These are my items now. He's the king of the house. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.